Today we're going to be talking about the targeted adjustment tool in both Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom. This is three reasons why you want to use this tool and two reasons why you may not want to use this tool at all. All right, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, where we learn to master Photoshop to make better photos. This is Photoshop for photographers. So here's the deal. It's always a good idea whether in your in Adobe Camera Roll like I am here or in Lightroom to be using the color mixer. Now the color mixer is a great spot to just fine tune and refine the colors as you've seen me use in many of my tutorials. But sometimes the question comes up and people have asked it, Blake, why would I want to use the targeted adjustment tool? And a lot of times when I email respond them, it's, well, you want to use it for this, but sometimes you don't want to use it for that. So I figured I'd make a video tutorial to make it easier for everybody. So before we talk about why we would use a target adjustment tool, let's hop over here into the color mixer in Adobe Camera Raw. Now to get to the targeted adjustment tool, you can't be in the color section because this assumes you already know what color you want to work on. Here, if we go into the HSL adjustment, you'll see this little tool right here that looks like a little crosshair next to a circle with the target. That's the targeted adjustment tool. So what this tool does, and the first reason why you'd want to use it, it's very helpful for determining what colors you actually want to modify in your image. You could look at all these sliders and be like, whoa, what, what are all these sliders and what color is what? I don't even know. But the targeted adjustment tool, when you click on it and it's highlighted like that and depressed like that, you are now in targeted adjustment mode, which means if you click on your image and you click and hold and move it back and forth, whether you're in the hue or the saturation or the luminance, it will modify the hue, saturation, or luminance of the color that you have selected just by moving back and forth on that color. So you'll see that that was actually the color blue. And here's our before and after on that. We actually made that blue rather more intense, which is actually pretty nice for this image. We're getting some haloing here, but don't worry about that. I'm not going for professional images at this point. On that note, sometimes when you're working on skin, it can be difficult to, to know what actual color the skin is. For instance, if we look at the saturation here and we click right here and we hold and we drag, you'll see that the skin is actually in the orangish. I would have thought maybe that was red. So the first reason why this tool is awesome is it can be used to help you find and determine what color it is that you want to modify in the photograph that you're working on. The second reason why you'd want to use this tool is it works in color clusters. Now this is really interesting and you probably saw that as I was editing this image, I clicked and dragged, you saw that the saturation of the oranges increased, but it also did a plus two in the yellows. Why is that? Well, let's go to this image here. What this does, the target adjustment tool will pick clustered colors to modify. Let's go into luminance because this is a great way to see this on this document. What you'll see here is that I basically have a uh, patchwork tile of all the colors that we have in our color wheel. The red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow, and back over to red on the other side. So watch what happens when I'm in the luminance and look at these sliders. I'm gonna click on this color right here, which is I'm thinking is gonna be our purples. And sure enough, it is. But watch how it also grabs the cluster of blue because that purple is so close to the color blue that it also grabs and modifies the color blue. But if I were to grab the color blue and move this up, it should move the color blue faster than it moves the color purple. So whatever cluster you're in, it's gonna take the primary color and move that first, and then it's gonna to go to its closest colors around it and move those along with it which can be very good for making sure that you don't take one color too far because sometimes you can get banding when you do that. If you were to just modify these sliders on your own and move the blue around, you might see that the purple doesn't match where the blue was because you're taking just the color blue and moving it. So you get this kind of pixelation and distortion in your colors. What the targeted adjustment tool does is it makes sure that you're moving and modifying colors in that targeted cluster of colors because now we're moving this green and it also has a little bit of yellow in it. When we go over to this color here, it has a lot more yellow present in that color than this color green did. So because it's got a higher presence and potence of the color yellow within it, it's going to move that slider of yellow faster as it moves that slider of green. So it's very smart. It's extremely intuitive on how it selects those colors in those color clusters. Now, the third reason why you'd want to use this is not just for the fact that it selects colors for you in those color clusters, but it can also be used to help with color separation. Like looking at this image here, I'm gonna put this on saturation here. I'm within the saturation, so I've got my targeted adjustment tool selected. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this color right here, which should be the yellows, and it is, but it's also mo modifying and moving the color orange a little bit. So here I can bring up the saturation a slight bit in those oranges, and then come over here and click on this, and that's gonna bring up the saturation a slight bit in the greens, but because the green is also a good color cluster to yellow, it's also gonna bring those yellows up as well. This can be great, for color separation when you're trying to get the hue just right of something in your image. 
for me, I like green grass to be green. Okay. I don't want it to be like hyper circus vomit green, but I do want it to be green. So if I click here and I move this up, it's going to grab the green and the yellow and move them up in their hues to get them closer to the color green. But then if I go over to this yellow here and then start moving this, it's going to separate that, that yellow from the green and then also modify the hue of the yellow and the orange. So what we're doing here is we're modifying each color individually, but we're getting color separation from that color as well. So while we did go from this green, which increased a little bit of yellow in our hue, we then went to this color yellow, which also included orange. And it's, it's really what it's doing there is it's finding the best of both worlds for that color yellow in the place that it needs to be within the image while making sure that the greens and the oranges move accordingly, which is really powerful and really effective. So what are the two reasons of why you'd not want to use the targeted adjustment tool? Well, the first reason you might not want to use the targeted adjustment tool is that maybe you just want those sliders to move independently. While we did say it's a good idea for those sliders to grab the color clusters, we might see in this image really like, you know what, we really want that yellow to be closer to the, to the greens than we do the oranges, so let's move that ourselves. That's where the targeted adjustment tool can drive you nuts because it's going to grab the color clusters, just like we saw in this image here, when we might need to just go in here and just say, okay, I just want the oranges to be modified and moved. Now, the second reason why I'd not recommend using the targeted adjustment tool is that sometimes you want speed and efficiency and clicking your targeted adjustment tool and clicking on these colors can be uh, detrimental to speed and efficiency. If you know exactly what colors need to be edited in, in the first place. For that, I'd say get out of this HSL altogether, go into the color section, and then you move these colors accordingly with the sliders right here with the hue, saturation, luminance, so you don't have to bounce in between them. You just go to the exact color that you want, dial in the hue, dial in the saturation, dial in the luminance, and forget about the targeted adjustment tool altogether. If you want to learn more about Adobe Camera Roll and how I control the colors within it, go ahead and click this video right here. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment and tell me some of the reasons why you do or do not use the targeted adjustment tool. I'm really interested to hear.